Welcome everyone here this morning to share in the, in the, uh, the farewell service. Uh, an opportunity to be thankful uh, for the service that our CEOs have given to us over the, the previous years and to share fellowship with them again uh, after the meeting. I remind the everyone on the PCC that uh, it's not really a farewell for us. We'll be here tomorrow night. Uh, it's 7 o'clock here at the Hall. So all of them on the PCC tomorrow it's 7 o'clock. Next Sunday we have our YP gift day. Uh, it's been the last two years we, we missed, uh, obviously because we weren't, we weren't meeting together. So an opportunity to come, share together and to support uh, and financially give to support our YP core and the meetings led by 13 plus. So all in all, youth themed next week, come along and support everyone and enjoy some fellowship there as well. Samuel Tapster uh, is going away on a scouts trip and from his own photography, he's made up greetings cards to sell. Uh, I've got one pack here, but I'm going to buy these. So if you want any, you'll have to see Nicola after the meeting, who might have some more. So an opportunity then, again, to support the youth folk and the things that they do at the core, but also away from the core. It's always great to support them there. Finally, the flowers are for Gillian and Trevor for your wedding anniversary. So congratulations, and we hope you enjoy them. Good morning. It's good to see you as we gather together for worship this morning. Hopefully, all our technical issues have passed or, and we will be able to record a full meeting this morning. Um, just a word, if you are not going to see us during the week, please make sure you speak to us before you go. Um, we know that there are some people who will see us during the week, but if you're not, if you pretty sure you're not, then please uh, don't leave without saying goodbye to us this morning. But primarily we are here to worship and we're going to commence, if you're using song books, by turning to song number 73. Ivy Band has reminded us of the tune, All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Let's stand and we'll sing the five verses straight through. Go on, we'll do that. Let's stand, please.
quand même. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall, join in the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. That opportunity that we have to go into that place and share in eternity. And we can do that. We have the knowledge that we can do that because of what God has done and what he continues to do for us through his son. Because he knows our name. He knows where we're going. Guardian of my soul. We're going to sing these words now, these beautiful words. I worship you, God's only Son, who took my sins to the cross so I could be completely free to follow where you lead. And as we say, because of that, he knows us. He knows our name, where we're going, this guardian of our soul. We'll sing the chorus through once before we share in prayer together. Claire, if you will, she will, just to play the tune again as we think, reflect on these words and what they mean to each one of us, how they affect us. Father God, as we come before you just now, we know the truth in those words, that you are indeed the guardian of our souls. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us through Jesus. We thank you for your love and for the fact that because we know you, because you know us, we can with certainty say we know where we're going we can with certainty say that we will join that everlasting join in that everlasting song and so father we just ask this morning that you will accept our worship even though it's the least that we can do it's the best we can do accept our worship accept our praise accept our thanks for everything that you have done and do for each one of us. And so, Father, we leave this time in your hands, that you will speak to us, that you will guide us, that you will strengthen us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Nicola and I were talking about this meeting from way, way back, one of the things that we said straight away was that we wanted all of our musical sections to share their ministry this morning. And so that's what we've got. And so we're now going to listen with interest as the YP brand band bring us their message for this morning. Thank you to our Young People's Band. Lovely to hear them playing. There are some that I'm not quite sure are um, quite the youth in there. But, um, thank you for their help as well. And the, the work that takes place to help our um, young people to learn and to join together. So. We're going to share in some scripture um, just now. It's taken from Ephesians and chapter 2, and just verses 19 to 22. Consequently, we don't normally start a, a sentence with the word consequently, do we? Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Beautiful words of 
Ephesians chapter 2. Reminding people of what they can be and who they are in Jesus. Who is at the center of all that they do. For seven years, we have known that this day would come eventually and uh, how that would feel. Sorry? I have missed out the songsters. Because <laughs> they're not written in my book. Well, listen to the songsters. <laughs> they have a very vital message for us this morning.
Thank you to the songsters for that beautiful message. I chose that particular song as particular um, significance to me. Um, there are times, there are many times in our lives, aren't there, when we just, when the oceans rise, when the thunders roar, when the, um, the turmoil around us seems to uh, be out of our control. And it's those times that we most need to be still and just know that we have God with us and that he is our strength and the calmness within that only God can bring to us in those times. Now, I look out on this congregation today and uh, it seems like we've been here more than seven years, not because we're uh, worn down and beaten and, or anything else. But it seems like we've spent more than seven years in Stockton. Um, we have all changed so much, and the core has changed so much in those years. Of course, when we arrived here, um, we were responsible for Thornaby as well, and so there was only one of us here, and we were doing four meetings on a Sunday and all of that. Um, and then Norma came and, and uh, took over from us in Thornaby and we really thought we would be able to get our teeth into what we were doing and what we wanted to do here together and then of course after a short while Covid struck and we had all of that um, separation and doing things differently and we come back from that very differently and uh, it is almost there, there are times when we when we thought and it's a shame we haven't had a chance to do all of these things but we know that we are leaving the core in good hands um, with Magus, Sandy and Ian. We recognise though today um, the things, the journey that we have gone through together. Recognise specifically just at this moment in time those who are missing from our fellowship. We have had a number of our core folk who have been promoted to glory whilst we've been here and we do acknowledge that just now. We leave a bit of ourselves behind when we move on. And in every appointment we've had, we remember particularly those that we have lost along the way. We also recognise new lives that have been born into the fellowship over those seven years. Um, and how that impacts on family life within um, individual families, we know, and, but within the, the core family and the fellowship. Life moves on. We are all seven years older. And I think possibly for me, I feel seven years older. Um, Michael looks seven years older. <laughs> At least I don't dye my hair. <laughs> <laughs> At least I've got some to dye. <laughs> uh, but it includes our children. It is lovely to have them all um, here with us today. Um, they were 13, 16, and 18 when we arrived in Stockton. Um, they were teenagers. Yeah, was she 15? Yes, yeah, she was 15. 15. Oh, bless. Life is very different, isn't it? Seven years can change a lot to us. Um, and it means that for the first time, we leave an appointment, and we knew that this would happen at some point, but we leave an appointment with um, just the two of us, really, um, Darby and Joan, and Thomas when he's home from university. So it will be very different. We recognise as well, for Michael and I and, um, and, and for Thomas, we leave the North East, and we kind of feel as if we belong to the North East. We have been um, officers in the North East, um, for 20 years and so that is going to be very different even though we should feel like we are going back home not that West Yorkshire was ever my home particularly but we should feel like we're going back home but we're having spent 20 years of ministry in the northeast it is going to be very different for us but we feel very strongly about going and leaving you in the safe hands of Majors Davis. I do have a message that I want to share with you today, though, um, and I feel quite strongly about this. And it echoes some of those words in Ephesians chapter 2, because the church, you, we, as a core, are God's work. It's not really about us, it's about God and God's work here. He is the builder. It is his kingdom and if we're trying to build our own kingdom, it is never going to work. It is God's kingdom. He is the builder. 
And each one of us, including Michael and I, we are perhaps more of a work in progress than most, but we are all a work in progress. We are not the finished article. We are not perfect in any way. We are being built. We are being made fit for purpose for such a time as this. And that will change as life evolves, as we all change. It must be continual if it is going to be effective. And so life will change for you and for us. And it should do because we are all evolving in who we are in our likeness to Jesus. Now, you and I know that when you have the builders in, you expect a certain amount of mess. That has to be the case sometimes in order to create something that is better, according to, in order to be able to improve it. Something that better serves your current circumstances. So it might be that you have the decorators in and you modernise a little bit. It might be that you have a, a wall knocked down because you want something that is um, more adaptable. But if we've invited the builder in to work, if we've invited God to work in our lives and in our core, then we have to be ready for the disruption and the mess that that causes. And that's something that we really all need to be aware of. Just imagine for a moment, if you left your keys with the builder and you were at work or you went on holiday and you expected the builder to be in there doing some work, and then when you came back, it looked like nothing had changed. There was no evidence of builders being there. You and I would assume that the builder had not turned up, had not come in and done anything. You certainly wouldn't want to, um, to pay for any of that work to be done. You would be disappointed. You'd possibly even be angry because you had expected the builder to come in and work. If we don't want mess within church, if we don't want change within church as we grow and as we evolve then it looks like we haven't invited the builder in to do that work we've not allowed him to do anything so expect mess church fellowship life family it is messy and if we expect god to come in and do the work then it is going to be messy but it is messy in order to move forward I shared before the songsters uh, sung to us some words from Ephesians chapter 2. I love the fact that it starts with the word consequently. As a consequence of knowing Jesus as our personal Lord and Saviour, accepting salvation, building our lives on him. As a consequence of that, verse 19 talks about the result of wanting to have God the builder working amongst us within this fellowship and within our individual lives. And so this is my prayer for you today, for Stockton Citadel today. That in verse 20, you will be built on the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, all those who have proved and paved the way before us. We do need a new list out in the entrance of offices because I think there's no room more on the bottom line um, to, to put Sandy and Ian on. So I don't know who prepared that list last time of officers that have been part of Stockton Citadel, but you need another space. Built on the foundation that was already there. Secondly, we talk about Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone being the very centre of all that we are and everything, everything that we do. And then in verse 21 in that reading, it talks about rising together to become a holy temple in the Lord, being a building where God dwells. Not just a building that looks beautiful, which we could all do, which is recognisable as the Salvation Army, but being a temple where the Holy One dwells dwells a holy temple in the lord and rising to become a holy temple standing tall and verse 22 a dwelling in which the holy spirit of god lives and i would challenge you this morning and i would pray for you as a core that you build everything that you are and everything that you do 
according to God's calling on your individual lives and on your core, on our core. With Jesus at the very centre, then you will continue to rise up and be a spirit-filled Salvation Army in Stockton on Tees that is recognisable as God's people. It will always be messy if you are doing it right. It will always be a work that is in progress. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about evolving. It's always a work in progress. Yes, there will be times when mistakes are made by individuals or by the whole. There will be need for acceptance. There will be need for forgiveness. That's part of family life, isn't it? But I pray that God will bless you in abundance. It is him that we stand on. It is him that raises us up. It is him that fills us with his spirit and allows us to be a standing force for him in this place. Before I hand over to Michael, we're going to sing together. I know this is a popular song within the call. It's number 861. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Here in the death of Christ I live. Bought with the precious blood of Christ. Let's stand and we'll sing the four verses straight through, please.
Amen. Thank you for that good sing. If the band haven't given their all during that, they're going to minister to us in music again just now. Thank you. <laughs>
here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Thank you to the band for that message this morning. I guess if there's a day when the officer can be indulgent, then it's today, it's farewell Sunday, isn't it? Um, unlike Nicola, I have finished my missionary service and going back to West Yorkshire as my home. <laughs> um, but, you know, we have loved all of, the, all of that time in the North East and these last seven years in particular. But I, as I said, I've been very indulgent. You see, I told Lee many years ago that when it came to Farewell Sunday, I wanted to play that, the band to play that piece, Light of the World. It features my favourite tune, uh, Aurelia. And then I said, also said, and we'll get to that, this bit in a bit, that I wanted to play something I could have a bit of a thrash to. So we're playing Godspell this morning. And while I very rarely do, I'm pulling rank. And saying to them two, off. <laughs> I'm playing. Anyway, while I was thinking about what I wanted to say this morning, the words of two songs featured, in, two of the songs featured in these band pieces came to mind. The Light of the World, of course, is based on the famous Holman Hunt painting of the same name, which itself is based on those words that I've just shared, the letter to the church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, in that particular verse, verse 20, which is also the inspiration for the song to the tune of Ori, the song number 614 in the songbook. O oh Jesus, thou art standing outside the fast-closed door, in lowly patience waiting to th pass the threshold door. Shame on us, Christian people, his name and sign we bear. Oh, shame, thrice shame upon us to keep him standing there. And the, you know the song. Now, what struck me when I was thinking about the peace, when I was thinking about the song, when I was thinking about those words of Scripture from Revelation chapter 3, is that here we have Jesus wanting to enter our lives. And he's wanting to bring something different. In fact, you could say he wants to bring order out of chaos. Now, I'm not contradicting what Nicola said a couple of moments ago, where she talked about things being messy. Because this is about also what Jesus brings to us. Yes, it is messy. But ultimately, what we're talking about is something beautiful, something ordered, something that we can live with, move on from here. So we live our lives in a way that brings honour and glory to him. And to do that, we have to, like it says in the song, like it says in the reading, let him in. I think it was Paul McCartney last week at Glastonbury, I think he, he played as part of his... Um, set, let them in. The song, let them in. Here, Christ is saying that to us. Let me in. I'm not going to force his way, but are we ready to do that? Point one. Point two, and this is where words from another song help us, is how we do this. The song is from God's spell, and it features in the piece. It is also a song that takes this inspiration from a prayer written, what, 800 years ago by the 13th century, century English bishop Richard of Chichester. The song, of course, is Day by Day. And the words of the chorus are, Day by day, dear Lord, of thee three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, Follow thee more nearly, day by day. If we're to bring order out of chaos, then this is what we need to do. This is the what makes a difference. If we can do this, 
then we have that relationship with God that he wants us to have. It's that key. So I'm not going to speak for very long because all I want to say is, are we ready to commit to it? Are we ready to committing to opening the door so that he can come in and eat with us? Are we ready to commit to follow more dearly? Love thee more dearly, follow more nearly. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly day by day. Are we ready to commit to all of these things? Because if we are, then we can have that relationship with God. As we reflect, the singing company are going to sing to us a beautiful song. It's called Cornerstone. And it reminds us that if we let him in, and if we do all this, see him more clearly, love him more dearly, follow him more dearly, nearly, and build our lives on his foundation as the solid rock, then he will be our cornerstone. The singing company.
Let's pray together. Father, let our hope, let our lives, let our all be built on you. We open the door of our hearts, invite you in. Come, make a difference. Make order from chaos and help us to grow in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now going to continue in worship as we wait upon you for your offering, please. Shall we pray? Dear Father God, we just thank you for the gifts you give each one of us daily. And as we bring our tithes and offerings to you today, we pray, Lord, that you'll bless them so they may be used to help extend your kingdom. Amen. I'd just like to make a little point about the YP Gift Day. We have a number of envelopes if you would like to give in the YP Gift Day. It makes it a lot easier when we go to do the administration side of things. So Nicola has some envelopes, and I've got some envelopes after the meeting this morning. So um, thank you for that. I've been asked this morning to say a word of thanks to the majors on behalf of the, the Corps. Um, it's always a great privilege to do that. Um, when you look at what Majors Michael and Nicola have accomplished here, seven years ago they arrived at the quarters and Michael was greeted by Auntie Grace. <laughs> Who would have thought that you would have come back here, Michael, know, all those many years ago? Then who would have thought that you would have had to have coped with a pandemic, a lockdown, the change in demand of the food bank, but both of you have managed tremendous in that area. You've been challenged, but you've risen to the challenges. You've even become YouTubers, <laughs> putting the ministry on YouTube. Also, you've become a fast food provider. On a Monday, as chicken and chat has turned into a takeaway. So there's many things that have challenged you while you've been here at Stockton. But I'd like to thank you on behalf of everybody for the way that you've adapted. 
I am always a firm believer that the Lord appoints the right officers at the right time to a call. We've had it over the number of years, whether it was Peter and Karen, they were here at the right time, going right the way through. And I believe that the Lord appointed you to Stockton at the right time to help us through the pandemic that nobody knew was coming. So the young people are going to come and present you with a card from the core and a card from themselves. They know where they are. Come on. From the youngest to the oldest, you've looked after everybody during lockdown. You've showed concern, you've shown love, you've shown compassion. You've gone round and visited people in their homes, made sure people had deliveries. At the YP annual, you actually went round with Nicola delivering books when lockdown was on. So thank you seems a very small thing to say. Um, people have given in to a little present we'd just like you to receive on our behalf. Um, being myself, being totally practical and not imaginative, um, when you're moving house, the last thing you want is a load of rubbish which is going to be put in, or nice rubbish which is going to be put into it. So um, we've got you a gift card so you can pick what nice rubbish you buy. To put into it. <laughs> And I wonder if we could just share a word of prayer with you at this time. Dear Lord, we just thank you for the service Michael and Nicola have done here at Stockton. We thank you for the energy that you've given them. We thank you for the love that you've shown through them and the compassion. And Lord, as they prepare to leave us, we pray, Lord, that you will be with them, that you will guide them in their thoughts for their new appointment, guide them in the preparation that they have to do before they leave. But best of all, Lord, we pray that you'll just look after them, be with them, bless them. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very generous of you. Um, we shall treasure our time in Stockton. We really will. But it's not the end of the giving. We're going to give out something. We've got awards. We have got awards for some of you. Unfortunately, we couldn't give you an award to not everybody. everybody not everybody won. Them. But uh, so this, you'll crave us a little indulgence, please. So Nicola's going to um, announce them, and I'm going to come round and present them. Okay. Um, believe me, not everyone will want an award when you've seen what they're for. So the first award is uh, for John Preston. This is for putting up with the CO's strops. And um, there have been many. You'll need the certificate as well, Michael. You'll need the certificate as well. You might want to save your applause for the end. Um, the next one, is Rob still here? Is here, where is he? Oh, Rob's award is for the most slices of toast eaten. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, during, um, during the last couple of years, Rob has been most mornings and uh, between myself and uh, I think a couple of other people, um, many, many slices of toast and jam have been eaten. Many sticky fingerprints have been left on the radiator and Rob has had his own special chair um, and uh, 
we spent some time together. We follow on that with the award for the most teaspoons used in one morning. If you think that might be your award, Mr. Ian Bartle, <laughs> most people can make um, drinks for people that come to the door for a drink and breakfast, which is something... Is there not a trophy in there for him? Oh, that's going to have to be specially delivered later. Um, you know, most people can use one teaspoon that's dry for coffee um, in the thing. One teaspoon for stirring coffee, one teaspoon for stirring tea. No, 20 teaspoons um, Mr. Ian Bartle uses in one morning. I can actually say that after the meeting, I shall be doing tea and Diane will be doing coffee. <laughs> um, and if you want to see how many teaspoons I use. But also, what I forgot to do is invite you all to join the majors in room one for cake this morning. Ooh. We've brought cake in. So uh, you can say <laughs> goodbye and have a piece of cake. <laughs> and use a spoon to eat the cake with. Well, the next one um, is for um, someone who has added the most sugars to a takeaway coffee. And that has to go to Diane Bartle, who serves um, tea and coffee at takeaway down the corridor there into the car park. And I think probably it's six sugars we've stopped at, isn't it? Um, People like a lot of sugar in their very strong coffee. If you use the photocopier a lot in the, uh, the core, um, this may be you, particularly um, midweek. The most prolific photocopier user um, goes to Mr. Ian Williams. <laughs> If you have spent a lot of time in the last few years bagging up tea bags, but you don't actually drink tea, then the best non-tea drinking tea bag packer goes to Maureen Gunkel. <laughs> Not long into um, picking up the goods from Greg's three times a week, I was told, you should bring the trolley with you, like Trevor. So Trevor gets the most chatty Greg's collector. <laughs> But I include Gillian as that as well, in that as well. <laughs> now the next award, the people aren't actually here, but they were the core baby boom launchers. And that was Katie and Jonathan Wiggum. George was born the day that we started um, work here. And uh, Michael came to band practice and that uh, new life was launched and now he sings in the singing company and everything it's, it's beautiful to see the reward for the firmest handshake goes to mr david Saby. oh sorry And the most cheerful marmite eater will know where she sat. I'm looking round. She's there at the back. Now, this isn't only the most cheerful marmite eater, but sometimes by a Friday morning, um, I've had enough of life quite often. And Karen will come to pack parcels and not only cheers me up, she's the most cheerful marmite eater. I did put the messiest, first of all, but then I had to take that off because she's had to bring her own butter. She, she dips the knife with toast back on in the butter, so she has to bring her own. I'm making Michael work for these this morning. Um, if you think you might be the most prolific pork pie eater, or the person that's mentioned pork pies the most and isn't Major Michael Barker, then you might be Mr. Lee French. <laughs> Just three more to go. This is a bravery award. If you think you have been particularly brave for work with 13 plus, you might be called Major Karen Clark. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't only the, the only ones who coped with recording over and over again because we'd said things wrong after so much of the recording during lockdown. The award for expertise in recording virtual Sunday schools has to go to Nicola Tapster. <laughs> Thank you. 
And finally, the, the greatest contribution to church growth comes when you have not only twins, but you're brave enough to have another one, Gemma and Stephen. <laughs> You all deserve an award for putting up with Michael and I for seven years. The office may be left tidy, there may be less strops, there may be less mess, there may be more organisation. Um, I would imagine that there will be. But thank you for having us. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this worshipping community. Thank you for allowing us to be part of this family. We have felt like a family while we have been here, and we thank you for that. Thank you for caring and for asking after our children and for asking about us. Who is on the Lord's side? We, we collectively are on the Lord's side. We are thine. Let's stand. We're going to sing these words in closing before we um, go and share fellowship together. It's number 992 of you using a songbook. Let's stand and sing straight through.
And Father, as we leave these pl this place, we pray that wherever we are and whatever we do in the future, that we are always on your side. So Father, continue to be with us. Continue to bless us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. Now it's my turn. <laughs>